everybody, it's the Pantry Party Show with your host, Ed DJ Blattner. Today's guest is at All Hails the Kale. She's a past intern of mine. We had a lot of fun. She keeps making delicious things on her Instagram account, so I had to have her as a guest. Are you guys ready to get this party started? The Pantry Party Show is about to begin right now. Hello, everybody. What's up? You got that theme song in your head? I sure do. Uh, it's a Pantry Party show. Your host, me, at DJ Blattner. You know that because you're at my handle watching. Hello. Um, hey, I had to wear pink today. Everything pink that I could find because our next guest, I nicknamed her. Hashtag pink AF. <laughs> so uh, let's get... Uh, I don't even want to say her real name. I think we should just keep calling her at Hales the Kale, all right? Let's go. Let's go, girl. Let's get you in here. All hails the kale. All hails the kale. All hails the kale. Dramatic pause. <laughs> hey, hey, DJB, how are you? Hey, girl. <laughs> At all hails the kale. I was like, I was going to call you Haley, and then I was like, why? When you just call her, At all, uh, you know, all hails the kale. Oh my god, I love it. I love it. Your introduction is fabulous. I am obsessed with it. I just have to say. Wait, tell, because I go, because I try and talk in a TV voice. <laughs> yeah. I, I you know, what it. can I say? The Pantry Party Show is about to, about to begin right now. Oh it's yeah. Really dramatic like that. <laughs> um, hey, how are you doing, girl? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, things are a bit crazy, you know, being you know, I had my dietetic internship, I was doing my clinical rotation, and then I was in the ICU that week. And then on Thursday, we got word that we'll, you know, be doing everything remotely. So it's been quite a change um, in my schedule and everything. But things are going really well. I've been able to spend a lot more time like working on the blog and stuff. So, you know, trying to make the most of this whole crazy experience. Well, so what mm -hmm. does happen? So you're so basically, you're the first uh, intern Artie to be that has been on the show. Um, I'm so honored. <laughs> uh, yes, because uh, uh, you were uh, interning with me last summer. I was. I went back through our notes, um, and we did two of my favorite things. I don't you love the dancing peppers? Yes. Rose water. Yes. It is so on brand. I go back to those pepper scoops all the time. Like. I was making um, a little red pepper thing earlier, and I'm like, it's like a pepper scoop. <laughs> so much fun. It's, it, was, it was a lot of fun, and I feel like um, that's what really draws me to like seeing your Instagram. I mean, you are an intern who has really, that's sort of like a side hustle even. Like, you really are and have been this sort of lifestyle food brand even before uh, nutrition school. So how did your whole passion come to be? And of course, everybody wants to know, everybody wants to know, where did your handle All Hails the Kale come from? Oh my gosh, where do I begin? So it's probably starting around high school, that's when Instagram really became a thing. I saw these people online and I thought it was so cool how they were sharing these recipes and health and wellness tips. But I also noticed a lot of the people who were, you know, had these very powerful platforms weren't exactly making substantiated claims. They're kind of anecdotal. They weren't really evidence-based and stuff. And at the time, I mean, I don't think I really made that connection. Like, wow, they're making these crazy claims. But in hindsight, as a dietetic intern, you really learn the importance of evidence-based recommendations and interventions. So um, at the time, I was like, wow, I want to study this and kind of learn the science behind it and kind of be able to see what's true, what's false, and be able to refute these unsubstantiated claims. So um, in high school, I decided to pursue dietetics. And then I went to UW-Madison, and I think always having that social media, like, power and influence in the back of my mind um, kind of drew me to the entrepreneurial space. So I also studied entrepreneurship there. And, of course, that's when all hails the kale began. And I think in, in college, I really learned a lot of people think eating healthy isn't, like, fun. It's boring. It's depriving. It's, it's not something you're excited to do. So... I kind of wanted to lean into that and joke, and I'm a very sarcastic person too. So that's where I came up with all hails the kale because kale's very trendy, but everyone's like, "Ew, I don't want to eat kale." So I kind of like to poke fun at that. So um, yeah, in high, in college, I really continued to pursue it, and I kind of brought my followers along the journey with me becoming a registered dietitian. And of course, I'm still in the process of that, but I think there's a lot of 
mystery that's kind of involved in the process. You think people study, dietitians study um, the health benefits of kale, but there's a lot of science to it. You have to, you know, look at these studies and translate it to the lay public. It's a lot more difficult than I ever anticipated, but I'm kind of excited to bring everyone along with me and kind of share what exactly becoming a dietitian entails and kind of, you know, demystify the whole experience. And especially during the dietetic internship, um, of course, I, as you mentioned earlier, I interned with you before, and I really appreciated our experience together because I think what really resonated with me was how you um, are such a hustler, and I'm the same way. Like, I've been hustling my butt off, and, you know, quarantine makes you think a lot. I'm like, maybe I should have kind of paused a little bit in college and been a little bit more present with my experience in college. And you always say hustle, but bring the joy along the way. And I cannot tell you the amount of times I've brought that back to my experience and had to apply it. Cause you know, oh, it's easier said than done, but you have to, yes, there's a disco ball. Disco ball for that because actually, yes. I mean, you know, you know, I don't take everybody who asks to be my intern. So I have this uh -huh. whole application process and like a video and writing tests and all these things. Uh -huh. And the, what stuck out, with you is that you are a hustler, but a joy hustler. And those, yeah. I can see it, right? I can see it. I love mm -hmm. a hard worker as long as there's fun and it's like not too meticulous and crazy, but it's like not yeah. joy at its heart. And so, yeah. yes, I appreciate you bringing that back because that's I, it's what I saw in you last summer too. Thank you so much. And again, it's, it's a great experience and everything, but it's a constant reminder because Sometimes you get so in the trenches that you have to remind yourself, hold up, let me breathe a little bit, let me reflect, and where do I want to continue to go? Like, is this bringing me joy? And during the internship, so first semester was like my public health community one, and I remember you had this Instagram post, it was like about um, Lizzo's song Juice, like, if I'm shining, everyone's going to shine. And I played that song multiple times on my commute, and I was like, okay, I need to get in the DJB mindset, like, Let's hustle. Let's bring the joy along the way. Let's shine. Let's have a good time. So, um, have you know? I think you've had a lot of good influences in RDTV. So, thank you for that. Oh, uh, you know what? Mm -hmm. Thank you for publicly saying that because I, I uh -huh. do feel like um, you know it's it's that fine balance, right? It's like yeah, to be the hustler, but like not so much that you forget to like you know enjoy yourself. <laughs> and yeah. the craziest part, what I have figured out about it, is that the more joy you put into your hustle the more success you get. Like, so it's like, mm -hmm. even though people are like, I don't have time for joy, I just want to hustle. It's like, actually you could be more successful if you added more joy. Uh, so Absolutely. I love that. And so you have yeah. really, you've just been um, doing your internship virtually. Like, are you still gonna, you know, be done with it and have the RD exam like on schedule? Yes. So I had, I think about 17 more days in my clinical rotation when I got word that we wouldn't be in the hospital anymore. And I actually did enjoy my clinicals a lot more than I expected. Because again, hustle but bring the joy along the way. I think quite often people say the dietetic internship is like the worst year of your life and stuff. But I was like, I don't want that to happen. I want to enjoy my time and share my experience. So I appreciate my time there. And then, you know, we took things remotely and we just worked on case studies. So I finished up my um, clinical rotation. And now just this week, I started my food service rotation and my food service class. So we have, I believe it's like five weeks of um, just kind of working on projects and it's more on our own schedule. So we're given all these assignments, but then we'll get that, those supervised hours done through that. And then I'll probably spend like a month studying and then I'll finally take the RD exam. And because RDs are considered essential workers, um, I feel very grateful that I am able to take the exam. I'm not sure how it is for other people in yeah. other industries, but luckily um, dietitians are in you know demand right now. So we can take the exam as scheduled. Well, so this is interesting. So you mm -hmm. uh, have this food service. How many, is that like a month or I forget how long is that? It's about a month. Yeah. Okay. So you have a mm -hmm. month of that. And then when do you start studying for the test? When is that? So I already cracked open the book, but I think because, you know, the pieces just keep moving. So I'm trying to get a grip on my schedule. So I s started studying, but I kind of need to really hammer down a study schedule. So um, I'll, I think I'll seriously study for a whole month after the internship, but I'm going to try to like study a little bit now, just so I'm a little bit less overwhelmed because knowing myself, I'm going to get very overwhelmed when I am done with my rotations and like, all I got is the oh RD exam now. Oh my God. I mean, cause there's nothing, you know, people are like, why do you want to become a dietitian? It's like, well, you know, I wanted to do for my career what I was doing in my spare time, but 
I love the idea of having initials after my name. It's like, there's nothing like a credential, right? So it's like, yeah, uh -huh. why don't you get that test going? So when, if all goes well, uh, at all hails the kill, when are you taking your test? When would I take it? So I yeah. would take it probably maybe I'll end up around July, probably sometime in August. Cool. Yeah, that's Very the cool. goal. Uh huh. That's exciting. Well, you know what? I mean, all I can say is practice questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all. Uh -huh. I feel like I don't know how to study for anything unless it's like practice questions. And then I get it wrong. And I'm like, Oh, my gosh, I don't know that. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and it teaches you how to think too, like yeah. the mindset to have. And also, once you, you know, take the exam, I heard it's like all the answers are like kind of correct. So it's like choosing the best one. So um, being ready for that and kind of seeing what those questions look like, I think is the most important thing because you don't want to open the exam and be like, oh my God, I was not ready for any of this, you know? Oh my gosh, I love it. And of course uh -huh. you have been like pre-studying a little bit now. <laughs> yeah. I love you. Type I of Haley, you. what can I say? Oh my gosh. So in all of your extra time that you have, uh, <laughs> interning and studying and all this stuff, you have been, oh, and uh, Kelsey Fritz said, yes, practice questions are the key. Yeah. Yes. So thank you, we, Kelsey. There we go. Um, so you have been still really uh, putting up content all the time at All Hails the Kale. I mean, you are, it's, you know, dressings and desserts and all sorts of stuff uh, up. So uh, what's the schedule? Do you try and post something every day? So the goal is to have, I've, I've figured out like, because I get very overwhelmed with all these, you know, moving pieces and all these responsibilities I have, it's really important to kind of give myself little goals. So like, okay, post five times a week and kind of schedule it on something else. So my goal is to post five times a week, five Instagram posts. And that can be whether it's like sharing tips on how to pray a recipe, a better for you dessert, maybe a nicer like dressing or something. As we talked about my, um, my awesome tahini dressing. Um, I try to post five times a week and show up on Instagram stories. Um, and things are kind of different now because, you know, prior to coronavirus and everything, I tried to show up on stories and kind of share my experience of the internship and kind of talk about that. But now it's a little bit more like all hails, keeping a positive mindset and a little bit of like a kind of what I'm doing in my internship right now. Um, but because it just started, it's been a little chaotic, but um, yeah, so I have my five Instagram posts a week. Um, every Monday, I try to share like a new blog post recipe and kind of share like, why is this a better for you, more fun um, option. And then Wednesdays, I um, try to have another blog post, whether it's like business, resume tips. Um, one of my girlfriends um, from Smarter in a Sec, she's a kick-ass resume writer. She knows how to edit it and everything. And she's edited over 300 since coronavirus hit. And she's helping a lot of people who lost their jobs due to coronavirus edit their resume, which is awesome. So I had her in the blog and I kind of like to make things a little bit more lifestyle and stuff because I think nutrition is so much more than lifestyle. There's so many other factors and in, involved in the whole puzzle. So I, I try to share it. other content on all hails too. I love it. I mm -hmm. love that you sort of, I, I'm a big believer in, even if you don't announce a theme, but like if you're trying to post content in the back of your head, it's like sort of a theme. So like every day of the week I have in the back of my head, sort of a theme. I don't know yeah. if you can really pick it up or not. Oh, but absolutely. It's like, but uh -huh. it's like, I have the theme going, you know? So, uh -huh. all right, you alluded to, you are on the pantry party show. We are supposed to be having a pantry party. <laughs> uh, and yes. so uh, it's good to really catch up and see being an intern, a dietetic intern right now, what that's been like and, you know, doing it virtual and trying to juggle studying for the tests and like so much of the unknown. So thank you mm -hmm. for sharing all of that. But um, pantry party stuff. I mean, girl, you've yes. got so many inspiring recipes. What is one that you'd really like to share with everybody of like, you got to make this. It's at all hails the kale <laughs> right now. So my current favorite recipe is a cinnamon maple tahini dressing sauce. I'm not really sure what to call it because I kind of use it for everything. And that's why I love it. Because I think a lot of us are getting so bored of vegetables. We're trying to eat healthy. We're told to eat healthy. We're trying to avoid that you know, meme, the quarantine 15. So it's like, how can we eat healthy and actually enjoy it and to not get bored of these foods? So actually, um, I think it was about a week ago, I did like a zoom demo on this recipe and I showed how to make it three ways. Um, so the maple tahini dressing, is this when I go into the pantry? Should I be in the well, pantry? I mean, I would like uh -huh. to see some pantry yes. movement. I would like yes. to get in that pantry, girl. Yes, let's uh -huh. get in the pantry. Okay, cool. Thanks for inviting us in.
Oh, of course. Yeah, I wanted to go outside just so I wasn't too loud for everyone else. But um, I'll bring you guys into my pantry. Oh, you being too loud, can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So it is a mess. <laughs> I love it. Hey, it no judgment you. zone. That's pantry party rule. Yes. This is what I like to say. This is all of my little, like, my stuff, my fun little baking stuff. And, oh, look at all you your know. containers are so cute. Oh, yeah. I'm very t type A, as I like to say. <laughs> I, type, I like to say type A plus. Um, type A plus. It's like, oh, are you type A? I'm type A plus. <laughs> <laughs> I love okay, it. Okay, so that's tahini. Do you always keep your tahini in the cabinet or do you keep it in the fridge? So I'm actually not really sure how to store it. I think they say once you open it, you have to put it in the refrigerator. So I do. Yeah, I, was, do. I don't know if that's right or not. Yeah. So you always like to keep it um, on hand, whether you have an extra jar or not. But yeah, I am obsessed with tahini right now. Because again, vegetables can get so boring. So it's a fun way to spice things up. And I like to add, let me go back into my pantry and get my maple syrup. This so, kind of okay, maple syrup I have doesn't need to be refrigerated. Here's two things I'll tell you. One... When I hear you say uh, cinnamon maple tahini, I think you're going to be making a dessert. I, that to me sounds like so sweet. I'm like, what is, what, how is this a vegetable thing? But here's what I uh -huh. know. That sugar debitters things or a sweetness debitters things. And vegetables tend to be very bitter. And, mm -hmm. and how do I know sweetness debitters things? Because people put sugar in their coffee to make it taste better. People put, you know, sugar in things to make them want to eat it. And there was, I remember a study of like how to get people to eat vegetables. It was sweet sauces, like a, a peanut sauce with honey. And this is sort of a version mm -hmm. of a peanut sauce with honey, but this is tahini instead of peanut butter and it's maple syrup instead of honey. Yes, exactly. And it's also great for people who have like nut allergies too, which isn't really something I thought about until I actually started working on a project for my food service um, lecture. And we were talking about food allergens and how it's important to monitor those. And while we're home, we want to make sure that we're still, you know, applying those principles at home because it's a food safety issue. Oh my so gosh. it's great for- RD says, I bet delicious and roasted Brussels sprouts. I, very yes. good, I agree. Um, mm -hmm. Amy G dot RD, uh, she, would only really eat things with cheese. So the fact that she's saying this would be delicious, I think is exciting. Um, yes. The other thing to say about this though, is, um, you know, I tend not to want to make dressings. I tend to buy a lot of my stuff, but this sounds simple enough that I actually could lean in. Oh yeah, it is super simple. I prepare mine in a blender, but you can oh. literally just pour it in like a cup and whisk it with a fork. I just put it in a little blender because I'm a little bit lazy, <laughs> but it. um, it's super simple. Yeah, mm -hmm. tell me, how do you make it? So you add a quarter cup of tahini, a quarter cup of maple syrup, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and then a little bit of cinnamon. I usually do like an eighth a teaspoon to a quarter teaspoon, and then just a little pinch of salt, and then that's it. I love that. I mean, easy. You know, I would probably put that in a, in a thing and stir it. Or mm -hmm. I wonder, is it liquidy and juicy enough that you could put it in a little like container with a lid and just shake it? I think so. Yeah. Oh. I keep mine in a mason jar. I haven't tried shaking it, but I'm sure it would work. The shake method. Mm -hmm. And we've got to come up with a name for this. We've got to come up with some sort of, you know, like um, in the, the flexitarian diet, I had a, a dressing that I really loved and I was like, you could really put it on everything. So I called it the universal flex something or universal dressing or something. And so now I feel like, oh, that's, that's what people need. That's what that hot sauce. I put this blank on everything, you know, I'm like, they should have called that universal hot sauce. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, I love the sound of this. So what's your favorite when you said you made it three ways with them mm -hmm. uh, on your zoom, what does that mean? So I show how to have it for breakfast, for lunch or dinner, and then for a snack. So oh. for breakfast, we had it over a sweet potato toast, oh. and you add a little bit of the drizzle and then a little bit of strawberry on top. It is so good. Yes. I mm -hmm. Here's the thing that I feel like people need to know. Sweet potato and tahini love attraction. I think there is nothing. I love mm -hmm. those two together. I love those two things together. That sounds so delicious. It's so good. Yeah. And then for meals, I like to do like three to four ounces of salmon, a little bit, a little bit of um, black rice, and then roasted veggies. So for the veggies, I like to roast like broccoli, asparagus, maybe some red pepper with a little bit of garlic. And then I drizzle it on top. And it's something about this garlic tahini maple mixture. 
that just tastes so good. And it adds a little bit of, bit of flavor, but I mean, the ingredients already have some flavor because, you know, they're roasted and everything, but it's delicious. I love the sound mm -hmm. of that. You know, um, I feel like black rice, I mean, that's, I'm actually, whenever anybody tells me about what they're eating, I always think about what would that look like on the plate? Like I have a hard time eating sweet potatoes with salmon because they're both like pinkish. I'm like, oh, I don't want that. I love uh -huh. the idea of black with pink salmon like that and the yeah. white sauce drizzle and the green. Like that to me, I'm like, oh my God, that's some color fiesta. I love that. Yeah. Um, or color parade. I don't think I want to call it fiesta. It's a color parade. Really. A color parade. I love yeah. that. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so, okay, so then how, how do you like it best for dinner? So, well, that would be like my lunch or dinner. And oh, then for the dinner. snack, I would do basically like a pepper scoop, like what we did. So I would cut up um, either a bell pepper or if I had the little like peppers, I would just drizzle it on top of that. And I love that because as we discussed, peppers are very hydrating. They have so much water in it. They have fiber and they're a good source of vitamin C. So if you just drizzle a little bit, a little bit of it on top, you have a little bit of protein and some of that produce, which is and, oh, power you know combo. I Girl, you get a disco ball for that. You know, yes, <laughs> some protein crazy. You know that. <laughs> um, protein, protein crazy for snacks. Here's what I was gonna say. This is a pro tip, top tip that I'm going to give anybody watching who's like, but I don't Take really notes. like bell peppers. Guess what? I don't either. But the mini bell peppers are the best because it's yeah. like less intimidating. Like when I see a big pepper and like strips and all this stuff, I'm like, oh. But when I see those babies like that and then you cut it in half and make scoopers like we make. Yeah. Oh my gosh, if you guys didn't see that last summer, you should scroll through my IG account and look for the- We gotta bring it back. Scoops. It's Research such a, you, yeah, I gotta bring that back. Actually, you uh -huh. know, I'll post, I'll repost it in my stories after this because it really is, it's worth a re-shout out because those dancing peppers are the cutest stuff. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my the box. Gosh. Well, so okay, girl. If I had to say, it it seems like that all you're doing is recipe testing all day long. In addition to your internship, I mean, so does anybody else get the benefits of all your recipe testing? Oh my god, my brothers. So they live in Lincoln Park, but they're back home for you know quarantine. They have been loving it. <laughs> so we keep all of my desserts in our freezer. And, um, well, we actually just ran out of it, so I'm going to have to make whip up something for them. But every day after dinner, my dad would go to the freezer, pick up some desserts. He calls them little treats, and then bring them back with some milk, and it is just the cutest thing ever. That is so cute. Hey, if you're looking for a job after uh, internship, uh, in addition to your blog, I feel like you should sell little treats uh, out in the world. Like that would be so cute, right? Who doesn't, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody knows everybody wants a little treat after dinner. So yeah. all hails the kale, little treats, and you can ship them around town and people can all, and like, just like your dad can have them after a meal like that. I love that. Yes. I love that idea. And I could like have little them portioned out and stuff. Cause that's the thing is like, you can enjoy a little treat, but just don't have like a whole big slice of it just you know moderate portion sizes okay, like a true dietitian yeah okay, like a true dietitian. it's like that's like me I'm like all foods fit but some bit better than others yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh hey well so here's here's what I want to know if people want to continue along and see the journey of all hails the kale and see all the recipes you're doing and everything that you've got coming up what's the best place to send everybody for all the magic that you are in this world so um, Instagram is kind of where my, like my main base, but I, I would say that the blog is the mothership. Um, I actually have a lot more projects coming up. Of course, I decided to pursue some more projects before I study for the RD exam, <laughs> but I have a lot more big projects coming up, which I'm so excited about. So those will all be on the mothership blog, which is allhailsthekale.com. But Instagram is another great way to connect. Too. I think that's mm -hmm. great. You know what? I do, I, I do love that you are always, doing something hustling but it does sound like you're having a blast so that's the most important thing girl mm -hmm. i love it thank you for being on the pantry party show you're such an inspiration why thank I you for having you me. are such an inspiration is that you have such passion and you know uh i think that is uh you know even though i hate using this word right now it's very contagious it's very contagious so you are just mm -hmm. you're a pleasure to be around with all of your pink and, and midriffs i also have a midriff on it on review as well i love it midriff. <laughs> <laughs> Literally <Because>. twins. <laughs> it's great. It's great. But I mean, you, that joy and that fun and the pink and the midriffs and just everything 
it just it, it's really it's such a refreshing energy to be around so I couldn't love you more babe oh thank you so much you are a rock star and seriously my inspiration love you thank you for being a guest on the pantry party show babe. yeah <laughs> that was all hails the kale on the pantry party show uh wow that was great she shared with us her favorite dressing right now uh which is tahini maple syrup lemon a little bit of salt i think that's oh and a little bit of cinnamon that's what she said and so she uses this on uh sweet potato toast in the morning she uses it on lunch bowls and she has it on little baby peppers uh for a snack seems very versatile. Uh, so nonetheless, I hope that you enjoyed that inspiration from someone who's joy hustling out there. Um, and uh, we have another fabulous uh, lineup of uh, guests for Thursday and Friday. Oh my gosh, the pantry party show, just so much inspiration. Cannot wait to see you tomorrow. Uh, so guess what? Until next time, I'm sending you high immunity vibes, big love, and lots and lots of kisses.